Hello. Welcome to ignani.com. Microsoft Excel 2010. Chapter 1. Getting started with Excel 2010. Part C. Introducing Excel 2010 User Interface, Continued. The Excel interface provides you with the right tools at the right time. In most Windows programs, you see menus and toolbars to select your options from. Instead of the traditional look, Excel provides icons, and button-laden tabs on the ribbon, containing most of the Excel features. To get up to speed quickly with Excel, it's better we understand the various elements that make up the Excel user interface. I will show you some of these elements and give you a brief explanation for them in this video. Title Bar This is the title bar. It displays the name of the current workbook. It also holds the Quick Access Toolbar. This area gives you one-click access to a few commonly used features. I will cover this in a more details later on in this tutorial, while covering customization. Apart from the quick access toolbar that we saw now, the title bar also holds Excel window controls. You can use these controls to minimize, maximize or restore, and close the Excel application window. If the Excel window is in restore mode, then you can use the title bar to move the window around, by holding down the left mouse button on the title bar and moving it as required. This is Excel help button. Clicking it will display Excel help window. This is the ribbon bar. This area gives you access to all Excel's commands, options and features. The ribbon. As you can see is a horizontal strip just below the title bar. A ribbon is organized into various groups, called tabs, with each tab containing all the related commands, which are usually presented in the form of a button, list or checkboxes. Instead of the menu bar and toolbar that were available in Excel 2003 and earlier versions, we are provided with the ribbon. I will introduce you to some part of it later on in this chapter while we will be looking at each of the elements in detail throughout this tutorial. The ribbon provides access to all the features in Excel. Experienced users prefer to use keyboard shortcuts for most of their activities. In such cases, you may wish to hide the ribbon bar. Ribbon toggle button comes to your help in hiding and unhiding the ribbon bar. This small arrow pointer Next to the help button can be used to toggle the ribbon bar by minimizing and maximizing. We can also achieve this simply by double clicking on the ribbon tab. Let me introduce you to the workbook window, which occupies most of the Excel user interface. This is where the current worksheet is displayed, and this is where you will be doing most of your Excel work. Each workbook window holds a single workbook, while you can have as many workbooks open as you need, only limited by the amount of memory you have. You are now looking at the worksheet. To be more specific, you are just looking at a small part of the worksheet, which is an important part of the workbook. Each worksheet is made up of cells. There are 17,179,869,184 cells in a worksheet. Each cell can contain a text, value, or a formula. In addition, workbooks can also store chart sheets. A chart sheet displays a single chart. Let me take you further and give you a brief about all the elements that make up a workbook window. To see a workbook window in full, Restore the workbook window, which is by default in maximized mode. This is workbook title bar. It only appears when the workbook window is not in maximized mode. This bar shows the workbook name. Note that when this bar appears, 
The Excel window title bar at the top only shows the application name without the workbook name. Like the Excel window controls, workbook window also has a separate set of controls to minimize, maximize or restore, and close. Workbook window controls provides the same option as Excel window controls, except that it only acts on the workbook window rather than the complete application. The first button is for minimizing the window. Clicking it, minimizes the window to the bottom left corner as you can see. With the second button you can either maximize or restore the window. When the window is maximized or minimized, clicking this button will restore the window. When the window is in restore state, clicking this button will maximize it. These controls appear in different places based on the state of the workbook window. Note that when the window is maximized, the workbook window title bar merges with the Excel window title bar, and the workbook window controls moves to the area below the Excel window controls. The last button is for closing the window. Clicking it will just close the workbook window for this button and leaves the remaining workbooks if any, as they are. This is the formula bar where the cell contents are displayed. When you enter text or formulas into a cell, it appears in this box. Though you can also see the data that has been entered in the cell itself, this box displays the data as it is entered. Let me explain this with an example, so that it will be easier for you to understand. Note that there is no difference in either entering the data directly into the cell or in the formula bar. The end result is just the same. First I will enter the text hello. Now, both formula bar and the cell shows the word hello. Let me enter a formula instead of the text. You can see the difference between the formula bar and the cell. While the formula bar shows the actual formula, the cell shows the end result. Formula bar is an important element in the Excel user interface, and we shall discover it more as we progress through this tutorial. This is the name box. This is where a cell name, or a cell range name is displayed. This box shows the current cell, or cell range name, making it easier for the user to reference it whenever required. In large worksheets, name box helps us to easily navigate around the worksheet, by directly entering the cell name or the range name in the name box. If you have any cell range with a name defined for it, they will be displayed in this drop-down box, allowing you to directly access the cell range, anywhere on the worksheet, or any other worksheet in the workbook, by just clicking on the name in the drop-down. When you select a range of cells, it always shows the top left cell, unless a range name is provided. I will cover the cell range in a more detail later on in this tutorial. This is the select all button. If you ever need to select all the cells in the worksheet, you can use this button. Clicking this button will select all the cells in the worksheet. No need to say that even the content will be included. This is a static header row which shows the column names. In Excel, as I did mention in the previous video, Excel numbers the columns from A to XFD, a total of 16,384 columns. This column is a static header column which shows the row headers. Excel numbers the rows using numeric digits starting from 1 to 1 million and 48,576. These are, worksheet tab scrolling controls. For every worksheet that is there in the workbook, you have a corresponding worksheet tab. When the number of worksheet tabs goes beyond the available area, only those that can be accommodated in that given area are visible, while the rest are hidden. In such a case, we can use the worksheet tab scrolling controls to scroll the worksheet tabs that are not visible. Show next tab. Show previous tab. 
show last tab and show first tab. These are the worksheet tabs. These tabs allow you to switch between worksheets easily just by clicking on them. By default, when you create a new workbook, it will contain three blank worksheets. However, most of the times you may need additional worksheets to work on. This is where the new worksheet tab, which is placed immediate right to the last worksheet, comes to your assistance. You can click on this button to add additional worksheets to the workbook. As you can see, only three worksheet tabs are visible, while the remaining are hidden and you'll have to scroll to view them. You can adjust this by using the tab split button. Drag this button to the left or right to decrease or increase the worksheet tab display area. The remaining area is occupied by the horizontal scroll bar. Since at any point of time you can only view a part of the worksheet, you are provided with two scroll bars. An horizontal scroll bar and a vertical scroll bar. You can use horizontal scroll bar to scroll the worksheet left or right, while you can use the vertical scroll bar to scroll up or down. To the right of horizontal scroll bar, and just above the vertical scroll bar you can find vertical and horizontal worksheet split buttons respectively. You can use these split buttons to split the worksheet display into two panes with each button. Let us try with the horizontal split button. As you can see, when I dragged it to the left, the worksheet window now appears in two separate panes and each pane having its own horizontal scroll bar. Notice the cell that is selected. They both are one and the same, but they appear in both the panes. When I scroll through the sheet in one of the panes, only that pane display moves while the other remains as it is. You can double click on the split line dividing the panes to remove the split. When you use the vertical split button, it works the same way. Except that now the worksheet is split into two panes divided horizontally. Each has its own vertical scroll bar, while only one horizontal scroll bar is available to manage both. When I scroll through the sheet, they both act individually. Their individuality is only to the extent of display. You can see that while I typed in one pane, it also shows up in the other, meaning that they both are one and the same just appearing in two panes. We can use both the split buttons together, thereby getting four different views. Splitting the window helps us to see the data in different parts of the worksheet, without having to scroll. These are page view buttons. By clicking one of these buttons, you can change the way a worksheet is displayed. The buttons you see here are for changing to normal view, or page layout view, or page break preview. Let me show you how each of these views are. The first button is to change the worksheet to normal view, which is the default view that we see when we open Excel. This view is very useful for building and editing worksheets. By clicking on the page layout view button, the worksheet display changes to page layout mode. In this view you can see how it would appear if you printed them. You can see on that screen how it would appear. Not only that, in this view, you can also add a header and footer which will be printed out. The last button changes the display to page break preview mode. This is another view provided by Excel. A page break preview shows where a new page begins when you print a worksheet. When you switch to page break preview, Excel displays the page breaks as blue lines. If a page break occurs in a bad position, for example, the page break includes headings but not the cells below the headings. You can use the mouse to click and drag the page breaks to new positions. Excel provides a few more views, 
which I will cover later on in this tutorial. This is the zoom controller. You can use this scroller to zoom in and zoom out of your worksheet. I will have to change the window out of maximize mode to show this next one. This is the window resize handle. You can use this handle to adjust the size of the window as required. You are now looking at the status bar. It displays various messages as well as the status of the num lock, caps lock, scroll lock keys on your keyboard. It also shows summary information about the range of cells that is selected and so on, which you will get to see as we continue with our tutorial. Though, this video does not cover everything that makes up the Excel user interface, I have tried to cover most of the important ones. In the next video, let us see how to move around a worksheet using keyboard and mouse. If you have any questions or need more information on any part of this video, please use the forum at ignani.com, we will be happy to help you. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how to videos, and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Use our forum topic related to this tutorial to get answers to all your questions. We would want your learning process as interactive as possible. Feel free to contact us.